Hello, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Geek Center. My name is Corey Merced. I'm the right honorable geek minister of the movie trivia face-off. Fancy new graphics for you here this week. Uh, pleasure to be joining you again this week. we got a lot to talk about in joining us this week. Uh, again, for the second time here, very happy to bring aboard Ruben, the King Center Cologne. How's it going today, Ruben? Uh, it's, uh, going it's going pretty good, good you know, you know just, getting just getting over your, your little, little stipulation, stipulation you decided exactly to throw at Mark Meyer, Meyer but, uh, yeah, uh, everything's, yeah, everything's going, going great. great. You know what, I, I, I was a little fed up, I had to use my dad voice, everybody was just doing a lot of yipping, and it was decided that, you know what, we just have to uh, nip this situation in the bud. So that match is actually being taped this weekend, we'll get into that one, uh, I'm sure, in a great detail. Uh, but Ruben, maybe tell us what's been happening uh, in the League of Shadows from the last few weeks. Yeah, yeah, lots, lots of training, training, lots of training. Lots of training. Um, we we kind of went our own way, way um, just to kind of study, study because, because obviously we're going to be competitors as well. As well. Um, um, so we're so kind of doing our own study regimens, just focusing on World War Geek. Geek. That's, That's what this is all about right now. And you threw a lot of new categories at us recently. So with all that being thrown at us, we have a lot more extra training going on. So... Yeah, yeah, lots of movie watching, lots of movie watching. And we're now joined by a special uh, co-host, I see. Uh, Ruben, you want to introduce your friend there? Yeah, yeah this, this is Kyrie. Kyrie. This is the, the League, League of Shadows, Shadows guard dog. dog. Don't, Don't mess with, with us or you'll, you'll have to deal, deal with, with, with this, this little, little girl. girl. Well, she looks absolutely vicious, so I'm certainly not going to mess with the League of Shadows anymore. Uh, you mentioned the new categories. I wanted to make a very quick announcement because actually I had a meeting with uh, our head writer for World War Geek, Adelaide Spence, and we talked about new categories and how they would be incorporated into World War Geek, and the decision is this. Uh, you don't have to worry about any new categories being added to the main thrust of categories. Like There'll be no Back to the Future category or Alien or Predator or anything like that, but in Mixed Bag, everything's fair game you might see an alien question in mixed bag or a predator question uh, i can tell you mixed bag of course not in every round we randomized all the categories in every single round so it might pop up six seven times during the entire event but mixed bag is a true mixed bag everything we've been dealing with here in the mto mtfo this season so don't worry about predator being a separate category but you may be getting a predator question in mixed bag <laughs> all right uh, well that's good to know so i guess the league of shadows has the Kind of just a little bit. Study just a little bit harder, maybe. I'm sure it's not a problem for you guys, though. Uh, from what I know, the League of Shadows, you guys are, are big-time study guys. So, uh, And, uh, of course, uh, Mark having to study for a very big match here. Uh, before we get into that, let's talk a little bit about the MTFO rankings. Uh, I had mentioned last week that I'm going to take some. I was going to take some names out of the uh, top 40 just because they're not that active, or they don't have any intention of competing in Geek again. Uh, so I took some of those names out. So there's a little bit of movement. Uh, plus, we had a couple of matches since last time I showed these, so I thought we'd go through them real quick. And so here we start with the top 39 in the MTFO Geek division. Uh, not a lot of movement here. Uh, Hunter Chainless, Hibley Scripps, Keith Kennedy. Uh, who isn't that active. I'm not quite sure if he still plans on competing or not. Uh, Garth Hardigus McMurray, uh, who's got another match now. Uh, he was selected last week. He's very much looking forward to that. I'm sure uh, his name will be rising up the rankings very soon. Uh, Sandy Robinson off just one bad day. Andrea Malabag, who has another match coming up real quick. And then we got uh, Lear Garcia and a couple of, uh, couple of rookies there. So uh, not a lot of movement in that group. Let's take a look at the next group here. And here we got names like Jackson Lattner, who... Uh, uh, you know very well, uh, Ruben. I believe you played him and, and beat him. 0-3 uh, in the MTFO, but this kid's just really unlucky because he's actually pretty good. And if you watched his match this past weekend uh, against Jack the Mayor, uh, he actually competed very, very well, and I thought he had a really good shot at winning that one. But uh, it's a real testament to him, I think, that at 0-3, he's only at a negative four points. Now, of course, the points, people have been asking, what are the points? It's a combination of a win bonus and a loss bonus if you lose in there, uh, plus a KO bonus, TKO bonus, and then all the points you scored in rounds one, two, and three. So the fact that he's only at minus four after losing three matches is, is a real testament, I think, to his talent as a competitor. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I, I 100% agree there. Um, I go back with one because you're right. You're right. He's got up against great, great fighters. fighters. He's faced two of the League of Shadows, actually, actually, when you think about it. He's faced two of us now. So it's very unlucky who you face sometimes. He just, he just happened to happened go up against, against two titans of the game. game. Uh, we got some other uh, big names here who can make some noise come World War Geek. I'm looking at uh, uh, Malcolm Lay's impressed me uh, as of late, and now that he's got a manager to help guide him, I think uh, he's going to improve quite a bit. Jay Burns, 
dominant in his last match to bump him up to 24 after being in the high 30s made a, a huge jump after that win he's a guy who's going to make a big splash in world war geek and uh, jay overmeyer uh who's another guy we haven't seen in quite a while but he's got another match coming up here real soon and i expect to see him uh top 20 easy uh, after that match nick carley another uh, good name there as well uh, these are some uh, some sleeper hits maybe for uh, world war geek no, yeah, I 100% yeah, agree. Um, especially um, especially you look at Jay Burns, Jay Overmeyer. These are like, like people that are top tier players. Like Jay Burns has gone has gone for multiple titles um, in other leagues and the Geek Division, and so he's a top contender. He just went up against you know someone that was slightly a little bit better. You look at uh, Jay Overmeyer. He's got a match coming up here. Uh, just uh, next weekend, actually, against T.J. Starman. And I think that's going to be a really great match. Uh, sleeper, maybe, for match of the year. We're going to see T.J.'s name uh, pretty quick here, I think. Let's take a look at uh, 20 to 11 now. Of course, uh, Nico Rigoli gets back into the, into the win column. He's number 20. Alex Frost has a big match against Jimmy Derry coming up. There's your boy Mark Kamire at 18. He's going to be taking on number 15, Ryan Payne. Uh, Mark Kamire... Uh, yeah, used to hold the uh, the highest uh, win or highest total in a match, a point total. And I think he might still have that. I didn't have time to go back and reconfirm that, but I think he was at 24 points, which uh, could still be the uh, the uh, geek record for uh, points scored in a match. Uh, then of course we got uh, Jack Mayer with a, a huge debut. He's at number 16. Uh, Jim Green. Hopefully he'll come back and compete real soon. Dave Lee's, Caleb Coho, and Albert Wordorama, who's got a match coming up here next week as well. Uh, any other names in this grouping here? Jump out at your Ruben that could maybe make a splash in World War Geek. Uh, I, mean, I mean, I'm not going to say, say too much, much about, about Mark, Mark because, because you know he's my boy. He's the, the League of Shadows. Shadows. Not going to say gonna too much, much about it. I know he's a, he's a great predator. Um, I had to play a perfect game to beat him. Beat him. Uh, uh, but you want to look at Caleb Coho, who's actually someone that everyone knows is a top tier player. He yeah yeah so he lost to Parker. And, and um, spoiler, uh, he, he had, had a pretty, pretty big, big upset, upset recently. recently. Um, um, however, however, you look at that match, things, things did not go on his way. He knew a lot of the questions that Nazario um, got right, right in his and round two, two, and that's kind of like with Stunkum. He got a category that he wasn't as confident about. I know he was excited Nazario got the Pirates wheel, but that actually took it away from him. So it sucks, because... He's one of the best, 100%. And I want and to face, face him as, as the King Slayer. I would love to face the King one day. Um, but things sometimes don't go too well. <laughs> That'd be actually be a really interesting matchup. Uh, uh, I'd be curious to see that happen. Maybe after World War Geek, I might have to put on my commissioner hat and my matchmaking hat and make that happen. Here's our current top 10. Uh, of course, uh, Chris Diaz here at number 10. Antonio Chavez at number 9. Caleb Bowman 8. Nick Tuhig. Uh, there's Nazario Montenegro, uh, a surprise 2-0, and 68 points. He's in there at number 6. Uh, he plays Geek just for fun. He's more of a singles competitor. But, all, you know, 2-0 and at a top 10 uh, showing here, uh, not too bad at all. Uh, yourself, of course, at number 5 with two losses. That kind of shows how strong you are that you're still in the top 5 here. And then, of course, another League of Shadows member, Joe Fairley, Mike Shea, the Spaniard, David Garcia, and, of course, the new number 1, Thomas Scully, 3-0, and dominating the Geek League so far. Um, this is as impressive a top 10, I think, as you're going to see in any fan league. Yeah, yeah, well, 100% agree with you. You look on there, um, there, these people have competed against the best of the best in other leagues. Um, they've shown what they're capable. They took, you know, two, two, two of the people above me um, are two people that beat me. Um, and I like to consider myself a top 10 player. So it's just like there's a lot of competition in this division, so much, and Scully. I give, I give him a lot of crap, but, but this guy is a wrecking ball. He, he somehow, somehow knows everything about anything geek-related, geek um, and it's going to be tough to kind of knock him off that number one spot. And, of course, he's got three slices on the wheel to determine the uh, seating of World War Geek, although I've had a, a few people uh, come to me and say, wouldn't it be great if he drew, like, number one and just pulled a Bibiani? Because he's one of those guys that could go from the worst number of the thing all the way to the end. Uh, he's just that knowledgeable. And there's actually a couple of guys in the League of Shadows, I would say, are capable of doing that uh, as well. Yourself and maybe uh, Joe Fairley, Dick Tuhig, and Mark Meyer, for that matter. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, and, I, you, I, know, you know, the, the competitive side of me would, would love to volunteer for the number one spot. spot. Then you got that, that, that selfish uh, uh, side of me that wants that title. title. So, obviously, obviously, I want to see, see how low of a number I can get or how high a number. But, yeah, no. League of Shadows can represent... 
Brian besides Brian, the challenge, the person that's probably the lowest on the rankings out of the week, but he is just as good as, good as the, the other three of us. us. Um, so uh, so I, I, you might think it's an easy way, way for him to beat one of us. us. It's, it's not. not. Mark Meyer is one of the one best competitors, competitors out there, and I can't wait for him to prove that against Ryan. I have breaking news here, uh, Ruben. Uh, I just got the full name for commentatoring nerd, so I can announce it here. Uh, first, a little back uh, background. This weekend, we're taping two matches. Of course, the big stipulation match we'll talk to in a minute. But first, there's going to be Brandon Dunlap, a uh, singles competitor, making his debut in Geek. Uh, he was going to take on Joseph Hathaway, another rookie. Uh, Joseph, his sister, took ill, and he has to take care of his family this weekend, which we totally understand in these crazy times we're all... Uh, living in right now so i'm happy to give joseph another match somewhere down the line when he's able to concentrate and train for it but late in the week we had to go on the discord and say can anybody step up and within two minutes i had commentatoring nerd pop up and say yeah i'll give it a go so uh commentatoring nerd's real name is andrew craig and uh he's gonna be competing this weekend against brandon dunlap uh no telling the tape on these guys because i don't know that much i know brandon is a real fixture in all the fan leagues i actually just competed against brandon in a singles match for mtfo last night so I can't spoil that one yet, but I'll just say it's a tremendous match. Brandon is a fantastic competitor, and uh, I'm really looking forward to taping that one. We're doing that Saturday, uh, but Sunday, Sunday we tape the big match, Ruben. Uh, of course, that's going to be uh, League of Shadows versus Death Proof, your faction against Alex Max, Ryan, the Caramel Mountain, Payne taking on Mark the Maniac Kamire. Loser is out of World War Geek and has to fight their way through the qualifier. Um Really, the only way we could do this match, and I had to put a little stakes on the line for this one, too, just to make it interesting. Uh, I know your boy's been preparing. How do you feel going into this match tomorrow or Sunday? Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm making sure, sure Mark knows everything, everything you could possibly know. know. I'm testing him um, as much as I could possibly I could test, test him. him. Um, you know, you know we, we talk a big game, game, but the League of Shadows, Shadows, the reason why, why we, we uh, believe we are we such are strong competitors, competitors is because, because we put in the put work to become strong competitors. competitors. And that's what and that's Mark's what doing. He is putting in the work in a lot of areas that are his weaknesses. weaknesses. Um, um, and then he's, he's even capitalizing on his strengths and working on those as well. well. So, so we're, we're working hard. hard. We're, not we're not taking Ryan, Ryan for granted. granted. Um, but he's a stepping stone. We're going to knock him out. That's one less person we have to worry about. And get him out of World War Geek. He probably won't be winning that qualifier match. Um, so we'll get rid of him. Um, and Mark is going to win this. He's going to be a World War Geek. And all four League of Shadows are going to be representing um, going for the championship. All right. Let's take a look at the tail of the tape for this matchup here. Uh, let's start with the number 18 seed, Mark the Maniac Kamire, with a 1-1 one -one record. Of course, a member of the League of Shadows. Uh, round one, he's batting 75%. Round two, a very impressive 18-20 for 90%. Uh, the only time he hit round three... Uh, he missed his two-pointer and his three-pointer, but hit his five. So uh, the big pressure uh, questions, no problem for Mark Maniac Kamire. Uh, he defeated Jackson uh, Lantner and lost to yourself, Ruben Cologne. Uh, looking over to the other side of the uh, scale, number 15, Ryan, the Caramel Mountain Pain. Uh, one and one, he's a member of Death Proof, Alex Max Faction. Uh, round one, 15 to 20 for 75%. Round two, 16 to 20 for 80%. Uh, in his round three, he's, he's uh, one for two on the two-pointer and the three-pointer but missed his only shot at a five-pointer. Uh, he defeated Alex Frost, the goth father, and lost to Jay overtime Overmeyer. Looking at these numbers, uh, Ruben, I know you're maybe a little bit biased, but uh, uh, do you see the slanting one way or another? Yeah, yeah. Um, even, even if you look at stats, um, you know, it's going to be a close match. match. It, it, we've always we've known it's going to be a close, close match. match. Um, Kamire might not admit it, but he, he, he believes it's going to be a close match. match. But the fact of the matter is that Kamire is a confident, strong player who uh, uh, puts in the work, work. And, and looking, looking at these at numbers, numbers he's, 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 he's the same with Ryan, Ryan round, round one, one. He barely, barely tops him in round two, two. Um, and, um, then and then round, round three, three like, like okay, okay so Ryan's, Ryan's hit one of his two or three, three and, and uh, Kamara didn't, didn't, but uh, uh, on the flip uh, side, Kamara hits five, so it's going to be a very, very, very close match, and that's what everybody wants to see, it's a close match, but at the end of the day, this match is going to be about who wants it more, who's going to put in the work more, and, and who wants that title will oh, add a World War Geek more. more. And, and I believe Mark Meyer is someone, someone who is super invested, invested in this league and super invested in winning this. 
and chomping at the bit. He, it's been a while since he's been in the ring. So I know he's been waiting for an opportunity, and uh, he's going to come out firing, I'm sure, on Sunday. I can't wait to tape that match. Uh, and the loser of this match is going to go down to the qualifier. They still got a shot of qualifying to get into World War Geek. Uh, all of a sudden, that's not so easy, that qualifier now. you got some big names like Adam Collins, a big-time competitor, is down in that qualifying match right now. Uh, you even got a guy like Jackson Latner, who, uh, you know, with a little luck, can finally go his way for a change. Uh, he's going to be a tough out in the qualifying match as well. So it's not an easy road for whoever loses this match. Are you a little bit worried that if somehow Ryan can pull out the win here and Mark's got to go through the qualifier and say he draws an early number, that he may not make it up to World War Geek? No, no me and Mark talked talk about, about this. this. Um, because, because the question, the question on the table, table is, why would why we accept, accept such a stipulation, stipulation and potentially ruin the chance for Kamire to be a World War Geek? And the reason, and the reason is... is and I hate to say this about the people in the qualifier match, but Kamai is better than each and every one of those people in the qualifier match. He can easily top all of those uh, players, and his knowledge is more vast than those players. So I 100% believe that if something, if a miracle happens, and Ryan does defeat Kamai, he 100% will win that qualifier and will be a world war geek anyways. It won't even matter. And that's exactly how Kamai feels. That's why it didn't scare him to accept the simulation. And that's, and that's why, why we're okay with this, because, because we know, God, God forbid, forbid, he loses, he's, he's winning that qualifier match. match. There's, There's nobody in that qualifier that, that can be that can beat him. This is going to be a fantastic match, ladies and gentlemen. Look for this to drop uh, next Thursday at 7 p.m. Eastern. The match between Brennan Dunlap and uh, Andrew Craig, commentatoring nerd, will be dropping on Tuesday. Uh, also at 7 p.m. Eastern, so stay tuned for those. Uh, real quick while I got you here, Ruben, I want to talk a little bit about factions because we're starting to get a lot of them here in the MTFO. Of course, League of Shadows, uh, led by yourself. I just want to go through some of the other factions here, too. Uh, they seem to be popping up all over the place. We, of course, have Death Proof, led by Alex Mack. She's got some big names uh, in that group. Adelaide Spence is now managing a group called Fetus Cult. Uh, Brooklyn Vale, of course, managing the new British Empire. They've been in quite a few matches lately. And now El Screedlo, uh taking on a second client, forming his own uh, faction, uh, just uh, bringing on uh, Garth Harkness McMurray, the Viking. Uh, we're starting to get a lot of groups going here. Uh, uh, this could lead to some uh, some interesting matchups down the line, especially when uh, when teams uh, kicks up. Yeah, no, I agree. And I'm glad that there's a lot of factions uh, because it's just going to feel that much better whenever we show them who's the dominant faction. Uh, Bleak Shadows, we like competition. We like, you know, the top. Uh, we like competing to be the best. Like, we, like believe we believe we are the, are best. the best. And, and um, um, with, with all these factions, factions it, just it just adds more people for us to dominate, dominate destroy and matches, and prove who's really the dominant faction in the mall. Oh, that's I will say, mm -hmm. I will say, Alex, Alex is and someone that seems like a great manager. manager. She really, really does. She, she just barked, barked up the wrong, wrong, barked up the wrong tree once. She challenged the League of Shadows. She came for us, and now we're going to give her a losing streak. Uh, from my experience, the mark of a good manager is somebody who actually puts in the time, uh, puts in the work, and helps their competitors. You see that with guys like uh, like yourself and with Alex Mack. I think she does a great job with her competitors. Uh, Brooklyn Vale and the New British Empire as well. That's another close-knit group, I think, uh, that that's really going to uh, form. And, of course, Adelaide Spence, I think, is going to be that type of manager as well. So we got some great groups coming here. And I, just to let you know, I'm formulating another uh, pay-per-view style event that's going to be happening in the fall uh, if you think free-for-all is like Royal Rumble, think more Survivor Series where we have elimination team matches. So the fact that we have all these factions is going to lead into that very, very well. Well, Ruben, I'm not going to waste your time and ask you who you're picking uh, in the Mark Kamire, uh ryan Payne match. So maybe let's just kind of go through the taping schedule and talk about some of the other matches that we got coming up. Uh, of course, uh, April 18th and 19th, we're taping two more matches. Uh, TJ the Terror Starman, who was supposed to compete in the match earlier, but uh, COVID-19, I think, kind of threw a wrench into those plans. He's taking on Jay Overtime Overmeyer. Uh, that's going to be a fantastic match. And we're also taping Antonio the Assassin Chavez. He's taking on the Arsenal, uh, Albert Wilderama. Uh, do you know much about these two competitors? Uh, they both seemed uh, very evenly matched. I think it's going to be an excellent bout. Yeah, um... Albert, uh, coincidentally, I'll actually be facing him sometime uh, in the next month in a different league. And I know of him as a competitor. I know he's a pretty strong uh, geek player as well. Um, and then the, uh, I'm sorry, the other one, it was uh, TJ versus who? Uh, TJ's taking on Jay Overmark. 
Oh, Jay Omar. Well, so well, these are two people that I have been wanting to face. I actually did a call out about trying to face someone um, a little while back. Mike just so happened to be Jay by Lopez, but there's a good chance I could have faced Jay instead. Um, and the reason why is because I've grown up to the best. Jay's one of the best, um, and his record shows it. Like, he, I think he only has one loss right now. That's correct. Yep, and uh, I'm really looking forward to that one. I know uh, uh, Jay's one that, uh, you know, when I had to adjust the, how we did the rankings, uh, slid down a little bit, and he wasn't too happy with me about that. But he's got an opportunity now with a big win and putting up a ton of points. He'll be back in the top 10 uh, in no time. Uh, with that, Ruben, is there anything else you'd like to promote? You got anything coming up? Any big matches in other leagues or anything? Um... Honestly, Honestly, I've been head board in a uh, board work geek. I've been studying a lot of different categories, catching up on my weaknesses, re-catching up on my strengths. Um, but yeah, I am going to be full metal now, uh, finally. Uh, I passed the edition, so I'll be competing in full metal geek soon. Um, and then I have a match against Brian Michaels coming out. Um, it's filmed already. Um, it's over in Multiplex. And have a lot of other stuff going on in those leagues. So I've kind of started coming out of my shell, kind of start competing more and trying to prove that I am a top tier player. Maybe not championship level yet, but getting up there. Well, we're looking forward to seeing you in World War Geek and another great performance, I'm sure. And I'd like to thank you very much for joining us again this week on Geek Center. I'd like to thank you all very much for watching, and we'll see you next week.